Hello students, let us continue our discussion of the essential elements of thermodynamics and the topic of today's lecture is some more numerical problems in electrochemical equilibrium. Now, if you would remember that I am uh, discussing a list of applications of which today I am going to focus on numerical problems that will require determination of activity coefficient of an electrolyte. So, let us go and have a look at the first problem and this problem uh, reads as follows. Find the cell potential in volt at 298 Kelvin and 1 bar pressure for this electrochemical cell. Now, let us first try and understand the kind of electrochemical cell that we have. So, I have here uh, an aqueous solution of zinc bromide where I have specifically mentioned the strength of the solution. So, in the scale of molality, the zinc bromide solution that we, we are using is having a concentration of 0.2 moles of zinc bromide per kg of water. Now, this is the first numerical problem that I am discussing in my series of uh, lectures uh, where I am explicitly mentioning the concentration of the electrolyte in the electrochemical cell of interest. Now, in this electrolyte solution on one side I have a solid zinc electrode dipped and on the other side I have a silver silver bromide solid electrode dipped. So, I will have to find out the cell potential for this electrochemical cell at 298 Kelvin and 1 bar pressure. Now, there are several uh, other sets of informations which are available to you when you solve this problem. So, the first one is the uh, standard reduction potential of the half electrode zinc 2 plus zinc which is minus 0.762 volt. And then I have the silver bromide silver electrode, the standard reduction potential is plus 0 0.70 volt. And from some other source, you have been provided the, uh, uh, the activity coefficient of aqueous zinc bromide solution, which at under the given condition is 0 0.462. Then the question is, how do I find the cell potential? So, of course, all of you know that we will use the Nernst equation to find the cell potential, but let us do it step by step whereby we start by writing the half cell reactions and the corresponding standard reduction potentials as before. So, the first half cell reaction is silver bromide solid taking up one electron giving rise to silver solid plus uh, releasing the bromide ion in the aqueous medium. And the standard reduction potential for this half electrode is plus 0 0.07 volt as given in the uh, uh, available information. The next half cell reaction is where the aqueous zinc 2 plus ion takes up two electrons and gets converted into solid zinc. And of course, I should also know the corresponding standard reduction potential which is minus 0.762 volt. And so, combining the two I understand that the standard cell potential is going to be E naught cell which is E naught right minus E naught L. So, in this case it would be plus 0 0.070 volt minus minus of the standard reduction potential of your zinc zinc sulphide pair. And therefore, I understand that the uh, standard cell potential for my chosen electrochemical cell is plus 0 0.832 volt. So, we will go ahead with these informations whereby I know the half cell reactions, I know that reduction is happening on the right at the cathode, 
oxidation is happening on the left at the anode and therefore, if I want to write down the net cell reaction, then what I will do is I will subtract the second equation from the first equation, because this is where I am I have written down the reduction form of the Z n 2 plus Z n uh, uh, electrode pair. So, I am subtracting them. So, the net cell reaction is 2 moles of silver bromide solid and uh, the other reactant is 1 mole of zinc solid and what I get is 2 moles of silver solid and uh, 1 mole of zinc 2 plus ion and 2 moles of uh, bromide ion released in the aqueous medium. So, this particular exercise tells me that now I know the number of electrons n transferred for the net cell reaction and obviously, the number is 2. So, as you understand that to balance both the uh, half cell reactions, I had to multiply the first half cell reaction with 2 on both sides such that the number of electrons exchanged uh, in both the uh, right uh, uh, electrode and the left electrode are the same and therefore, n is equal to 2 over here. Now, moving ahead therefore, with the information on the net cell reaction, I uh, with the information that I have transferred uh, 2 electrons in the process of this net cell reaction and the standard uh, poten uh, cell potential at uh, uh, as 0 0.832 volt. Now, I can write down the Nernst equation for the cell potential. So, what is the Nernst equation in this case? So, first of all I will write that E cell that is the cell potential of my electrochemical cell that is E naught cell minus R t by n f then a natural logarithm of the uh, uh, ratio that I learn from my net cell reaction. So, in my net cell reaction the on the product side I have 2 moles of silver solid, 1 mole of zinc 2 plus in aqueous medium and 2 moles of bromide ion in aqueous medium. Therefore, the activities of each of these species will appear in the reaction quotient the numerator of the near reaction quotient as shown here. So, I have activity of silver solid raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced cell reaction. So, that is the reason why I have A square and here again I have A square for the bromide ion because uh, the stoichiometric coefficient for the bromide ion here in the net cell reaction is 2 and as expected I have activity of zinc 2 plus ion in the aqueous medium raised to the power of 1. So, I am going to divide this product by the activities of the reactants and each activity raised to the corresponding stoichiometric coefficient from the balanced uh, uh, chemical reaction. Accordingly, I have activity of silver bromide solid raised to the power of 2 into activity of zinc solid raised to the power of 1. Now, once again we will simplify this entire expression by adopting the standard values of pure solid which is here giving me the first term in the numerator is equal to 1. The first term in the denominator is also equal to 1 and so is the other term in the denominator. So, in a simpler form for this particular cell the form of Nernst equation turns out to be E cell that is equal to E naught cell minus R t by n f the natural logarithm of activity of zinc 2 plus ion in the aqueous medium and activity square of bromide ion in the aqueous medium. Therefore, if I want to find the cell potential which is this quantity, I should be able to evaluate all the quantities which appear on the right hand side. So, let us go and check how I am going to uh, do this evaluation. 
So, the first thing that I do is I go back and try to understand what would be this product for this given aqueous solution of zinc, zinc bromide. Now, by definition I know that activity of a strong electrolyte with this chemical formula that A is uh, having a nu plus uh, atoms uh, of A combines with nu minus atoms of B to form the strong electrolyte. In that case, the activity of the electrolyte that is going to be activity of A raised to the power of nu plus multiplied by activity of B raised to the power of nu minus. This is by definition. Therefore, if I just look at what we have here, my nu plus is 1 because I have zinc bromide. So, zinc has only nu plus equal to 1 and bromide has nu minus equal to 2. Therefore, activity of zinc bromide aqueous that is equal to activity of zinc 2 plus which in this case I have written as just a plus activity of bromide minus raised to the power of square. So, what I see here is essentially the activity of the zinc bromide electrolyte whose molality is known. Actually, there is another way of writing this uh, definition in terms of the mean uh, activity which is shown here. So, what is the difference between this notation and this notation? So, when I write activity of activity with a subscript of zinc bromide aqueous, I am talking about the activity of the aqueous solution of zinc bromide. But if I am adopting A plus minus as the notation, then I am talking about the mean activity of the same electrolyte solution and the relationship between A and A plus minus for zinc bromide is shown in this picture. Okay. So, that tells me that now my E cell is nothing but E naught cell minus R T by 2 F. So, what I have done is instead of N, I have put in the value of N which is 2 F, then logarithm of I could have written A zinc bromide, but I have written here A plus minus to the uh, uh, cube that is the activity of the zinc bromide. Uh, solution. Now, moving ahead then I need to put in the value of this uh, mean activity of zinc bromide and then I should be able to find out E cell from the given uh, conditions. Now, this by definition is the molality of the electrolyte solution multiplied by the activity coefficient of the electrolyte solution and I am talking about the mean activity coefficient and the mol mean molality of the electrolyte. Now, this basically means that I am having instead of gamma plus minus, I have gamma plus into gamma minus squared and, in, uh, 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 and for m plus minus, I have m contributing the 1 mole of zinc 2 plus ion present in the solution and then 2 m moles of bromide ion will accordingly be present in the solution that should be raised to the square giving me that the activity of the zinc bromide solution or the a plus minus cubed that must be equal to 4 m cubed into gamma plus minus cubed. Now, the given condition is that m is equal to 0.2. Therefore, uh, I need to know the gamma plus minus. If you look at the given conditions, the gamma plus minus has been provided to you and therefore, you know both the values of m and gamma plus minus and you can find out the activity of the HCl solution. So, the activity of the HCl solution which is nothing but A plus minus cubed that is equal to this number 4 multiplied the by the value of m raised to the power of cube multiplied by the value of gamma plus minus raised to the power of 3. So, that gives me the mean activity 
uh, coefficient uh, mean activity of zinc bromide raised to the power of 3, which corresponds to the activity of the zinc bromide solution is 3 into 10 to the power of minus 3. So, now, now I am more or less all set. I know the value of E naught cell. I know the activity of the zinc bromide solution and all I now need to find out is R t by f. And since I am at a temperature of 298 Kelvin, I do not really have to find out what R t by f. Sometimes it is uh, found to be convenient to replace this by this number 25.7 millivolt. So, that is what I will do to calculate the cell potential. I will write down E cell that is equal to E naught cell which is plus 0.832 uh, volt minus 0.0257 volt for R t by uh, R t by f divided by 2 as it appears that I have an n equal to 2 process then natural logarithm of this number which is the activity of zinc bromide solution. So, if you do a quick calculation you will find that the cell potential is going to be plus 0 0.907. This particular problem is representative of what you can do uh, using Nernst equation provided you have a solution which is a real solution. In this case zinc bromide is a real solution. It has a non uh, a unique value of gamma plus minus which is not equal to unity. Therefore, I, I can say that it is a real solution and therefore, I had to use the uh, definition of activity to represent the contribution of the electrolyte to the uh, Nernst equation. Now, sometimes it so happens that this value of gamma plus minus will not be directly accessible to you. This is the case when I look at the second problem. So, let me read out the problem to you. Find the cell potential E in volt at 298 Kelvin for this particular electrochemical cell, where it is told that E naught of the AgCl Ag pair that is equal to plus 0 0.22 volt. Now, here as you see that once again I have given you the concentration of the HCl aqueous HCl solution that I am using as the common electrolyte between the silver silver chloride electrode and the hydrogen electrode. Now, as you see once again the hydrogen electrode is uh, comprised of hydrogen gas being bubbled over a platinum wire at a pressure of 1 bar. So, this is the standard state of the uh, hydrogen electrode and therefore, I would say that this is the standard hydrogen electrode being coupled to the silver silver chloride electrode to give you uh, uh, the uh, entire cell. And I know that the E naught value of this standard hydrogen electrode is 0, 0.0 volt by convention. Therefore, when I try to study this cell, I will have to bear this in mind. So, once again we start by writing the half cell reaction. So, silver chloride solid 1 mole of it on taking up 1 mole of electron produces silver solid and releases chloride ion in the aqueous medium. Similarly, the half cell reaction involved uh, in the uh, standard hydrogen electrode will have 1 mole of H plus aqueous solution with uh, which uh, on uh, being reduced by 1 mole of electron gives you half mole of hydrogen gas. Now, looking at the standard reduction potentials, I understand that when the, I couple them, I must be having the silver silver chloride electrode on the right because there will be a reduction at the cathode on the right and I will be having oxidation as at the anode on left whereby the hydrogen gas will be converted to H plus ion it will be releasing H plus ion in the aqueous medium. Therefore, to write the net cell equation a reaction I will 
subtract the second uh, equation from the first and this will be the net cell reaction. So, what is it that we uh, find out immediately once I have been able to write down the uh, net cell reaction? Of course, by knowing the uh, standard reduction potentials of the two uh, uh, electrodes, I can easily find out what the standard cell potential is going to be. So, in this case the standard cell potential is 0.22 volt. Now, moving ahead I can also say that the number of electrons transferred for the net cell reaction that is equal to 1. So, since I am going to use the Nernst equation to find out the cell potential, I am all set because now I know the E naught cell, I know the number of electrons transferred, I know the net cell reaction and therefore, I will write down the Nernst equation as E cell that is equal to E naught cell minus R t by n f the natural logarithm of the reaction quotient at equilibrium. Okay. So, now uh, as you see uh, uh, the reaction quotient. So, the reaction quotient as before involves the activities of the products raised uh, each individually raised to its stoichiometric coefficient in the net cell reaction divided by a product of the activities of the reactants each raised to a power uh, to the power of uh, its stoichiometric coefficient in the net cell reaction. So, here as I see apart from hydrogen all other stoichiometric uh, coefficients are equal to 1 and that is exactly what has been uh, represented here. Now, I would ask you to use the standard notation to simplify this uh, expression. So, I understand that there are three quantities which would go to 1. So, activity of pure silver solid will be 1 by convention, activity of silver chloride solid again will turn to unity by convention, but what about hydrogen gas? If you look at the condition under which you have prepared the hydrogen electrode, it is the standard hydrogen electrode and its pressure has been fixed at 1 bar which is the standard pressure. As a result the activity of hydrogen gas will also become equal to 1. Therefore, activity raised to the power of half will still remain 1. Therefore, in uh, my expression for the cell potential simplifies to E naught cell minus R t by n f the natural logarithm of activity of H plus aqueous multiplied by activity of C l minus aqueous. Of course, you understand that this has to do something with the concentration of the HCl solution that I have talked about here. So, let us go and see that what it is. So, I can write down that the E cell now depends on E naught cell minus R t by n f natural logarithm of activity of HCl aqueous solution. And therefore, the question is I know E naught cell, I have written it out here, I know n which is written out here, R t by f is a constant at a given temperature whose value I know. So, all I need to know is the activity of the given HCl solution. So, let us go ahead and do it. Now, let me remind you that activity of a uni univalent electrolyte that is the electrolyte A nu plus B nu minus if it is chemical formula is this, I identify that nu plus is equal to 1 and nu minus is equal to 1 for a uni univalent electrolyte. And if I have uh, uh, an aqueous solution of strength m by m naught where m naught is 1 mole per kg, then I can always write down activity of aqueous HCl is equal to m square into gamma plus minus square, where I have written down the contributions coming from the individual ions and collected uh, them in terms of mean molar concentration and the mean activity coefficient, okay, which is gamma plus minus. 
So, now I know the activity of HCl aqueous is m square gamma plus minus square. Now, what information has been given to me? It has been given to me that m is equal to 0 0.05. So, the question is, is there any way that I would be able to find out the mean activity coefficient gamma plus minus? And this from our previous discussion, we know that we can use debye huckel limiting law to find out gamma plus minus if its information is not available from any other source. So, what is the debye huckel limiting law? Let me remind you that the debye huckel limiting law says that gamma plus minus if you take a logarithm to the base of 10 of this quantity that is equal to minus of 0 0.509 this is a constant at 298 Kelvin, then modulus of the uh, product of nu plus and nu minus multiplied by the square root of i, where i is known as the ionic strength of the solution and defined as half of a sum of nu i square into m i by m naught, where i can be either the positive ion or maybe the negative ion. Therefore, it says that for the given uh, electrolyte solution, I should be able to find out the ionic strength. And once I know the ionic strength, I go ahead and calculate log gamma plus minus. So, that is what we are going to do next. So, in this expression, we are going to put in nu plus equal to nu minus equal to 1, because I am handling uh, HCl as the electrolyte. And then I will write down i from its definition as half of m plus m and that gives me this is equal to half of 2 m and eventually I find that the ionic strength of an aqueous HCl solution is equal to the number of moles that are present per kg of water. So, now I am all set. I know log of gamma plus minus that is given in terms of all these quantities and now I know what all these quantities are. So, I find that log of gamma plus minus uh, is equal to minus 0 0.1138. Please remember that I am talking about log of gamma plus minus therefore, gamma plus minus will turn out to be 10 to the power of this particular number which is minus 0 0.1138 thereby implying that gamma plus minus is nearly about 0 0.77. So, we actually undertook this entire exercise just to be able to find out the activity of HCl aqua solution. So, now that I know the, uh, uh, the expression for m and gamma plus minus, I can find out the activity. When I work out on the activity, I find that the activity is this number. It is about 1.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 and then I go ahead and put this value along with the value of R t by f at 298 Kelvin and I find that the E cell is, this is the contribution of E naught cell, this is the contribution of R t by f. I have n equal to 1, so I have put in 1 in the denominator and logarithm of activity of the HCl solution and therefore, the answer is the cell potential for the given cell is 0.39 volt. So, now what you have seen is if we are using a real solution, in that case it is possible to find out the cell potential accurately. If you know how to determine the activity of the electrolyte solution. And while doing so, it may so happen that you will be left with uh, just uh, some given value of the activity coefficient and the molality of the uh, uh, electrolyte solution or it may so happen that you will have to use the debye huckel limiting law, where you need to know the 
chemical formula of the electrolyte as well as the ionic strength, so that you can go ahead and find out the mean activity coefficient of the electrolyte and then use it to find out the activity of the electrolyte and use it subsequently in the Nernst equation. Thank you.